Good afternoon, councillors, members of the public, officers, welcome along. I declare this meeting open. It's good to see the gallery well occupied tonight, so welcome. Councillor Steele is an apology for tonight. Declarations of interest, I have uh, Councillor Hayward declares a financial interest with respect to item 10.4.2. Are there any other declarations of interest, councillors? <coughs> we have no questions. Confirmation of the previous minutes. Someone move that, please. Councillor Cook, Councillor Giles, all in favour? It's carried unanimously, thank you. Are there any petitions, councillors? for a number of deputations tonight. Mr McRobert wishes to speak on item 10.4.1. Those who agree, please indicate. Thank you. Mr Doble wishes to speak to item 10.4.2. Those who agree, please indicate. It's approved. Mr Ukval uh, wishes to speak on the item dealing with Ward Street, which is our... Item 10.4.3, those who approve, please indicate. It's approved. Mr Fitzgerald wishes to speak to item 10.44, those who approve. It's agreed to. Uh, Mr Chadwick wishes to speak to item 10.44, those who agree, please indicate. That's approved. And Sarah Wall wishes to speak to item 10.44. Those who approve, please indicate. That's approved. 
So ladies and gentlemen, what I'll do when we get to those items, I'll invite you up um, individually to speak for five minutes. Item 8.4.1, can I have someone move that? Thank you, Councillor Jones. Councillor Giles, all in favour? It's approved unanimously. Thanks very much for that, Councillor Cook. Councillors, we'll deal with each of the items on the agenda individually tonight, as most of the items are covered by deputations. Item 10.2.1, someone prepared to move that? Councillor Jones, Councillor Giles, all in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Ten point four point one, Mr. McRobert. Welcome, Andrew. You have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll only be uh, one or two. Um, just wanted to just make five point or four points, if I could. Um, the South Moreland Structure Plan. I think quite a few of the councillors have been involved um, in discussions on this structure plan over a number of years. It's involved a lengthy and collaborative planning process, including um, some extensive flood modelling. I think we've now had some 27 iterations of the flood modelling which has um, been signed off by the Department of Water. It's also been prepared in very close consultation with council staff and some of the um, features of the structure plan are actually um, a result of some of the suggestions of senior staff and we appreciate that. All the issues that have been raised to date have been addressed or are in the process of being addressed. Um, so I don't think there's anything there that um, should be of great concern um, or that won't be addressed as we go along the process. Um, certainly believe the plan has merit. It's a very important growth cell, future growth cell for Bunbury um, and we would really like to enlist the support of Council. Um, we certainly agree with the recommendation, the officer recommendation and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you Andrew. Uh, there's no opportunity for questions tonight but uh, congratulations. Thanks. Let's see how we go. Someone prepared to move the executive recommendation. Councillor Hayward, seconder. Councillor McCleary. Is there likely to be any debate? Question, question Councillor Jones. Uh, yes, it relates to the flood mitigation and drainage. Um, who will bear the costs for the major amount of work that needs to be done? CEO. So the, the question is, if there's major works to be done to flood mitigation, will the proponent carry that cost or will it be a state government? It certainly won't be local government. Does anybody, if you don't know the answer, just say so and we'll find out. As far as I'm aware, it would be the developer. The, there's a single developer on there. Um, it, uh, whilst there is some, um, the, uh, some of the drainage would go through some of the um, regional reserve, most of the... Um, internal uh, requirements, infrastructure requirements would be borne, as far as I'm aware, by the developer themselves. Great, thank you. Any further questions? I'll put it all in favour. That's carried unanimously. Congratulations and pass on our best wishes to the Pusantini family. Hope that goes really well. We move to 10.42. Councillor Hayward. And Alex Dobell, is it? Alex, welcome. You have five minutes. Thanks, Mayor. Um, look, yeah, definitely won't take five minutes. We've obviously uh, submitted an application to uh, have some boundary uh, fence line signage erected there along Bustle Highway, Blair Street, outside uh, Bunbury Turf Club. Um, thanks for considering the application. Uh, the proposed shade cloth is basically to shield out um, unsightly back of house services that you can see from the main road. So obviously we went through a process where we looked at shade cloths but we thought we might as well put the application and ask the question whether or not we're happy to also reflect uh, the brand of the company along that fence line. So part of the as part of the submission it's pretty straightforward within the agenda that, um, yeah, as I said, it's just something that we'd like to move forward on. Thank you. So I'm prepared to move. Councillor Kelly, Councillor McCleary, is there likely to be any debate? I'll put it all in favour. Those against, it's carried unanimously.
Well done. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Cook. Mr. Uckfell, welcome. I do apologize for my today's squeaky voice. My councillors, your elected representatives of this city have the right to accept or reject citizens as well as legal entities' proposals. I can't, I can't hear myself either. <laughs> you don't, don't stand next to him, Councillor McGuinness. Okay. It's unusual for this man not to have a voice, I can tell you that. I know, I know. You are happy about that. Yeah, I'm, gonna, sure about that. I'm gonna turn the clock back on now. But you, as some city councillors and mayor, have also a choice to make your own proposals and decisions and solutions. My remarks pertain to proposed amendment 90 pertain to changes to SEO 53. Proponent of the change, Caliber Consulting, were rather timid with the reasoning proposal. It is proposed to change it from the existing to R60. They did not consult any of the inhabitants living in the precinct. If they did, Calibri then will know that neighborhood do not see any problem with rezoning that pressing to R80 or R100 even, which will be actually in line with development of Blair Street and Holle pressings as is. In my mind, as well as my neighbors, rezoning to R80 or R100 will be more favorable outcome for the city as well. City have a problem at the moment with future growth. City is virtually struggling, as we all know. There is actually easy solution to that, and Wall Street Pressing can be an example of that. Allow ground floor for whatever use city allows, but put condition to building living quarters on the first, second floor, or even four if you are very squeezy. Be it rental or owner occupied, currently on the precinct is living 13 people on nine blocks of land. 13 people. I never know about that, but comfort. It is enormous waste of space and hindrance for future development of the city. On the basis of this short analysis, I would suggest to the mayor and councillors to raise this pressing zoning to R80 or even R100. Pressing is one of the Bambre trophies. It is attractively located and with lots of potential. You, I do apologize. I hide that crap. Can allow that to happen. Please take this initiative and rezone city pressings, not only mine, to at least 100. City needed that. Thank you. Thank you. I think the, uh, the gist of uh, Mr. Ukval's deputation is to increase the density to a higher, a higher level. Uh, even up to R100, I picked that up. But just a question through the CEO to the officers: um, Has there been, uh, has it been, Mr. Ukfell been in contact with anybody to discuss his uh, ambitions for his block <coughs> land, yes, for his property? Not Any, uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I'm sorry you're unwell that we couldn't hear the full presentation. But is what I said accurate? Did that summarise what you're saying? Thank you. So I'm prepared to move the executive recommendation. <coughs> Councillor Giants, thank you. Seconder. Councillor Hayward. Councillor Jones. Um, well, if I understand Mr. Ockwell's um, argument is that um, this particular land could go to R80 or even R100 to satisfy the future growth in terms of a residential uh, requirement for the city and that there wasn't any real consultation um, with the residents. Um, from my reading of the um, item, uh, there did appear to be a consultation, but uh, as with many of these items that we get um, through council, sometimes there's a proposition 
and a, an amount put in, for example, R30, R40. And uh, people aren't aware that perhaps they could um, suggest something that's even higher than that. Um, not everybody's well versed in um, town planning. Um, and as Mr Aqua pointed out, there are nine blocks of land there. But we get back to the issue of that land being in individual owners' hands. And obviously they have a view for the future um, of their properties. So I think um, at this point, um, I'd be quite happy to go along with uh, what the recommendation suggests. Um, it's already been through uh, quite a process and um, as such um, I would seek councillors' uh, endorsement of the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Howard, do you wish to speak? Speaker against? I'll put it all in favour. It's carried unanimously. Thank you. 10.44. Uh, we have a number of deputations. Uh, Mr Fitzgerald. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Councillors. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, tonight, basically, I just wanted to confirm and speak, uh, uh, acknowledge that uh, following the meeting that we had with the executive staff uh, and senior staff, um, the landowners' um, brief, briefing to me was that um, a lot of the issues were openly discussed, and, and um, from that meeting, the landowners jointly had a, a better understanding of what was being proposed. I suppose the um, the point that I would, would make is that um, while the, the level of discussion is obviously not relevant to go to great detail tonight, it was it was critical and key to the um, success of those discussions in identifying a couple of key areas and, and potential which have, have been acknowledged broadly in the, in the report that's been prepared for you and presented to you tonight. And, and basically that was a, a, an understanding in a, and of, of the actual representation of that group and an ability for, as we understood, from, I say, the landowner's perspective, um, for the committee to, to review its its makeup and, and its and its uh, within its terms of reference, with the uh, with certainly the understanding and intention of perhaps a more equitable um, arrangement of membership, and and probably more importantly, as I briefly outlined to you when I last spoke on this item, council, that the landowners in the area were particularly sort of uh, concerned and um, hopefully hopeful that they would be able to progress with the development. And while it's clear that we would be, they would be working within a framework that's outlined within a local area planning process, which is comprehensive and obviously needed, um, the, the discussions that we had with the executive staff and uh, uh, indicated that there would be a possibility as this, as this progressed to look at the precincts as individual precincts, not as uh, necessarily restrictive on just the the, uh, the the whole of the area in one, and that, that perhaps these that the, the stables precinct could be progressed in some form of planning to work into the local area planning process at a sooner rather than later process. And the landowners were very interested, obviously, to be very proactive in any part of that sort of process. And hopefully they could um, possibly look at, and it's up to them to investigate that further, obviously, but look at um, trying to progress forward with some assistance with um, some structure planning action to feed into the local area planning process. So, Councillor, that was, we've certainly, um, as I said and outlined in the report, the, the landowners were uh, far uh, happier with the, with the outcome and certainly supported which the, uh, the, the recommendations tonight, because clearly the, the larger issues that relate to what they were, were w would come with further investigation into this particular process. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Mr Chadwick. Welcome, Craig. Five minutes. Thanks very much. Thanks, uh, Mayor Brennan and councillors. Uh, in regards to uh, the uh, race course local area planning project, uh, yeah, we certainly support the project uh, focus. Um, in regards to the, uh, the quality of the membership, um, well, it's been put forward. Um, I mean, from the point of view of the Bunbury Turf Club, uh, um, we are a key stakeholder there. Um, the uh, Bunbury Turf Club is owned by the community. It's not owned by, there's no shareholders. 
Um, there's no money goes back in dividends to anybody. But um, uh, I think, Council, uh, what we'd like to put forward is that uh, the Bunbury Race Club is a key component to the WA thoroughbred industry. We are the major training base outside of Perth, and the way the industry is heading, we mostly in the future become the main training base. There's a fair bit of pressure in regards to Ascot, etc., in regards to movement. So it, it's very important that uh, as we go through this process, that um, um, the BTC's uh, requirements are considered. Um, we uh, don't see that we're moving from our current location. Um, we've got a lot of money involved in our infrastructure, so uh, we look forward to the, uh, the project uh, reference group uh, getting on with their uh, uh, looking at this project and, uh, and uh, coming to a sensible conclusion. Thanks, Greg. Sarah Wall. Is there Sarah Wall in the audience? Mr Mayor, I might just declare an interest given uh, the Bunbury Turf Club have made a deputation on okay, this. Okay, that's noted. I'll get you to fill out the paperwork later. <coughs> Welcome along, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr Mayor, councillors and general public. My name is Sarah Wall and my husband and I reside at 31 Bar Road, Bunbury in the Stables Complex. I am speaking on behalf of the residents who wish to be able to continue to live and or train horses from the Bunbury Stables Complex. We would like to point out that this includes three households where the residents are over 80 years of age. We feel very strongly that going forward the local area planning project needs to produce outcomes that enhance the area while supporting and encouraging the long term growth and sustainability of racing within the South West region. Strategic planning and consultation between the council and racing bodies together with community representatives will go a long way to ensuring the future of the complex and the economic value it adds to the Greater Bunbury area. It has recently been confirmed that the Bunbury Trotting Club will host for the next two years a night of Inter-Dominion heats. The Inter-Dominion is the biggest pacing race in both Australasia and the Southern Hemisphere. This provides an enormous boost for, both tourism, uh, for tourism in the Greater Bunbury area. The infrastructure of both the Bunbury Trotting Club and the Bunbury Turf Club are second to none for country clubs in Australia. The majority of landowners supporting infield development have made use of all the advantages of living and training horses from within the complex, most of them for decades and many of who continue to do so currently on a daily basis. They should be appreciative of the fact that although they believe their time within the complex has expired, recent purchases made by new landowners are the future of our industry and it is now their turn to see what they can make of their lifestyle choice and the great facilities that have attracted them to the area. It is also important to accept, accept that there are many older landowners who wish to continue to enjoy the ambience and benefits of, in, of living in their home and enjoying the participation within the racing industry. We support a residential and stable zone similar to the City of Belmont model at Ascot, where blocks are zoned R10 and have a minimum site area of 875 square metres. In addition to this, each block must be able to accommodate both the residents and a minimum of two stables should any current or future landowner wish to have them. This would ensure the long-term viability of this unique development which is ingrained in Bunbury's history. A zoning of R10 will also provide certainty for any future purchases and the silent minority who are the forgotten fraternity participants in all of this. They are the numerous people who rent stables from within the complex. The release of blocks through an R10 subdivision may afford these people the opportunity to purchase their own land and stables whilst also attracting other participants from outside of Bunbury as the complex has previously done. Western Australia's head racing body, Racing and Wagering Western Australia, or otherwise known as RAWA, has a long-term vision for Bunbury to become the racing and training hub of the South West for both the gallopers and pacers. The continuation of council development of the council developed precinct area is considered vital, especially for the long-term viability of the Trotting Club. As previously stated, the retention of Lot 471 Bar Road and Lot 501 Eccleston Street are considered critical to ensure the ongoing successful training from within the stables complex. The following statement is from Noel Riley, the General Manager of Harness Racing Western Australia, and I quote, Racing and wagering Western Australia as a controlling authority for the three race codes in WA 
maintains a strong interest and active presence in the activities and issues that pertain to ongoing racing and training activities of the Bunbury Trotting Club and Bunbury Turf Club. The retention of this unique and historic area is considered vital, especially for the long-term viability of racing clubs, in particular the Trotting Club. There is a predominance of horse population in the Bunbury region, the region being one of the growth areas for the equine population. Railroad is heavily reliant on the horse numbers from this region to generate the economic benefit to Bunbury. Muted changes to our codes of this area create uncertainty and present a threat to the residents and the clubs placing the economic benefit at risk. End of quote. In closing, we would like to thank the Council for the opportunity to make this address and trust that any future decisions affecting our special use area will be made with a complete understanding of the full ramifications to the industry, the economic impact on the Greater Bunbury area and our lifestyle choice which is made in good faith. Should the private properties be rezoned to anything greater than R10 and the loss of any of Lot 471 Bar Road and Lot 501 Eccleston Street happen? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councillors, we have uh, two recommendations to get the first one reopens debate. So it's just Councillor Cook, Councillor McGuell, all in favour? It's carried. With respect to recommendation number two, Councillor McGuell has indicated an interest in chairing the uh, project steering committee, planning the planning project steering committee or group. If anyone else wishes to nominate, now's a good time. Can I have someone move the executive recommendation two with Councillor McGuell as chair? Councillor McCleary, Councillor Warnock. Councillor McCleary? No, no. Councillor Warnock? Anyone wish to speak against? I'll put it all in favour. It's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor. Cool. Just on that, ladies and gentlemen, we, we will now proceed with all the work that needs to be done on this particularly important project. I'm looking forward to goodwill and respect throughout the whole process. Councillor McGuell has just been appointed chair and I'll be supporting him with other elected members. Thank you very much for your interest and uh, look forward to this project going through on a smooth path. Now, if any of you wish to leave now, we have another item, but if you wish to leave now, I'll pause while you quietly leave the room. I sound like a school teacher, don't I? Is that an access issue? No, it's a stampede. Stampede. Uh, 10.4.5 is a, a little bit unusual, however we need to deal with this administratively and we do need to have town planning reasons for rejecting. So we have the original executive recommendation there which was defeated. I'm happy to take on the council determination uh, recommendation providing it's strictly along the lines of town planning. Councillor Cook. Mr Mayor, I would like to, um, to propose the Council determination. The Council refuses an application to amend the planning conditions of temporary development approval. Application reference DA20151961 at lot 30 number 22 Palmer Crescent Davenport in accordance with the City of Bunbury's Town Planning Scheme number 7 for the following reasons. And I've list listed the four reasons there. A, the company set up the noxious industry without council's approval. B, once the community complained, the company sought retrospective approval. Temporary approval has <coughs> been given twice, but all conditions have not been implemented. C, the company has continued to trade outside of the approved trading hours. D, the solid fence is required not only to mitigate windborne particles, dust and noise, but is also required to contain noxious chemicals from being washed into the adjoining seasonal 
Wetman. Mr Mayor, I second to seconder. Thank you. Yeah, just take a seat, Councillor Cook. Um, I need convincing that these are town planning grounds. Uh, I'll ask the CEO for his advice. If he can't give it to me, the planning staff can give me advice. Are these four items, are they town planning reasons? Thank you. Um, through the Mayor, um, in terms of the main town planning reasons, obviously information has been circulated to um, Mayor and Councillors in the past few days. Um, the City's preference or advice to you is that the reasons of refusal are linked to um, Regulation 67 with the Planning and Development Regulations. So going a little bit further in the reasons of refusal and saying in relation to 67, for example, um, or the likely effect of the development um, on the natural environment or water resources um, that are proposed to protect or to mitigate in, um, impacts on the natural environment or the water resources. In relation to previous history, obviously if it was to go to the State Administrative Tribunal, the State Administrative Tribunal would like consider the history of the site, but that being standalone, a reason of refusal um, probably would not hold up into that. It would just be taken into account or due regard in that overall decision. Thank you. With that in mind, uh, um, with your indulgence, Councillor Cook, I, I have had a chat to Councillor Kelly. Do you have a more precise... I'll just let that sit for the moment, your, your motion, because it hasn't got a seconder, but I'm seeking some... Uh, yes, very yeah, focused uh, town planning. That's uh, the primary reason that the council is our decision is based on protecting the amenity of the adjoining park and the people who use that uh, park and open, uh, public open space. Councillor Cook, are you happy to uh, second that? Because I'll, I'll rule your initial motion out of order because it lacked town planning principles, but this one to me sounds like it's going to do the job. Thank you, How's Mr. that Mayor. for technicality? Yes, second that. Thank you. Councillor Kelly. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, today I'm starting up on amenity. Um, and amenity is not defined, I believe, absolutely exhaustively in town planning. However, I do note that uh, the um, Director of Planning provided us with a, an excellent synopsis. The meaning of amenity in WA, which I had a, a good look at. Um, I do say it's not exhaustive because amenity is, uh, can be very subjective, but I do know that it includes noise and visual amenity and uh, factors relevant to amenity uh, that we must take into account are the general characteristics of a locality, including the presence of any features of social or cultural or similar, similar interest. So in other words, the amenity of a place is something that is uh, indeed mostly subjective, but it can be uh, uh, identified quite clearly. Now, in the case of Palmer Crescent, the separation between an area of parkland and it's a children's playground, it is public open space, and this industry, which is a noxious industry, is currently a chain link fence. Less than 10 centimetres, Mr Mayor, or no more than six inches in the old lane, and there is no buffer. There is no buffer between the grounds where the activities are taking place and the children's playground, that public open space. It's a matter of interpretation by the local planning authority. In this case, this is us in this chamber, and we've got to make a decision. And my contention is that amenity means the effect on visual and oral, that is noise, amenity in the immediate neighbourhood, where the residents, a playgroup, will pass the by or the neighbours will be aware of the industry. At the moment, you can see quite clearly through that chain of effects. And as anybody knows, an industrial block is not necessarily a place of great amenity for people who are living in the neighbourhood or indeed playing in the playground right up against the fence. So in assessing amenity, and it's a legitimate planning um, uh, reason, the local government authority, that's us, the elected members, should always consider the characteristics of the neighbourhood. And for example, if the locality of the industry that is proposed, this is the one that we're talking about, impacts on important social, cultural or scenic features. And it's my contention that it does. So we councillors are compelled, entitled and impelled, uh, compelled to consider whether it is in character, scale and in keeping with the features of the children's playground, which is a green space which was purposefully set there back in the old days, and I'm talking a fair bit of an old day there, set there 
as some sort of um, gap between two places, that's the neighbourhood and a, um, an industrial area. Times have moved on, of course, and uh, we wouldn't uh, actually do what we've done now, but uh, we're, we're in a retrospective and a retrofitting situation. So I'm saying that the playground, the public open space, this pleasant amenity of green space and the societal and cultural significance of the area has a right to be protected. And there's no doubt about that in my mind, and that is what we're talking, amenity. And this is the reason we're refusing the business the opportunity to trade on Saturday after 1pm and why we're asking for a solid fence. A fence that not only acts as an additional barrier to fugitive emissions, dust, noise, spills, fumes, odours or otherwise, but also acts to screen a noxious industry from what is a site for public use. So councillors, our decision is based on protecting the amenity of the park and the people who use the park. It is a legitimate planning reason. There is no other buffer. So let's do the right and decent thing by the people who are using the park. I just, uh, in the little space I've got left, Mr Mayor, I just want to uh, refer to something in our um, agenda which was from uh, about the solid fence. I just want to point out, and this is a bit of a sad thing about uh, regulation, I suppose, is that mostly DER, my uh, poor fellow people over at DER, can only act after the event. Indeed, they're saying their response to this uh, was that they uh, didn't require the construction of offences because they have to predicate their decision upon nothing happening. That this won't happen, it'll never happen. And we know that when we say it'll never happen, in invariably it does. Now, they can say that their regulations are good enough to prevent dust and fugitive emissions, but we know that by putting a solid fence up there, we're taking that extra step. I'd like to see a mural on it, facing outwards, so that we don't look into that backyard and that uh, we have that appropriate separation, Mr Mayor. So amenity is a totally legitimate planning reason for uh, making the decision that we're making and I urge uh, councillors to uh, put that amenity down in that reason and support it. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I don't have a lot to add. Uh, obviously, uh, looking at the two items, the, the trading hours, um, I was told that I needed to provide evidence that uh, the trading hours have been flaunted, and indeed I did that. 8.20am on Sunday, November the 1st, 2015, I went around there and took two photographs. Both show the gates and the doors open, and a forklift truck was unloading a truck on a Sunday. And yet these people were seeking approval to work on a Saturday afternoon. The um, solid fence, of course, my fears are well known, and uh, the, my major reason is the, because I don't want chemicals running into the uh, wetlands in the adjoining park. So, uh, councillors, I urge you to support the motion as it is, and uh, we get on with this. Thank you very much. Speaker against. Thank you. I just have a quick question. Council Coves has a question. Uh, a question, just a question. Uh, I'm just wondering if the CEO can just give us, uh, uh, I think that the, the councillor um, uh, Kelly spoke very well, but the, the only issue that I've got is that we have previously approved this and now we're saying we're not for different reasons. Does that create a conflict or are we legitimately allowed to do that at this point? Through, through you, Mr Mayor, my understanding is the council, council has to consider every application on its merits as it comes forward, and uh, that's what you're doing tonight, is considering that matter. Question, Council McGuinness. Yeah, my question is in regard to the environmental impact to the wetland adjoining, uh, and that being a reason for refusal in terms of it being a planning issue as well. Is that not something that is a legitimate reason for refusal of this application? As per <coughs> Councillor Cook's um, motion there. Yeah, perhaps I can help the CEO out here. You'd have to actually prove that uh, there, there will be wetland contamination. And I think that's the point Councillor Kelly was getting at. Uh, EPA can't act, DP can't act until there's an event. Did you have anything to add? No. Speaker against, Councillor Morris. We um, talk about amenity, visual and noise. The factory was there to begin with. The factory will be there afterwards, whether it's sandblasting or not. Visual. It's still going to be there. Noise. 
We were actually asked to come out to the park three years ago, and we actually stood right next to the home that was closest to the, the sandblasting. The doors were shut, and Mr. Evans asked that the sandblaster be turned on inside. The only noise we heard was the traffic that was on the ring road. No noise was coming from that factory. We could not hear it. So visual is still going to be the same. Noise, there was no impact. Amenity does not fit into this situation. So I'm asking that we actually go back. We reject this, this motion. And we go back to the original executive recommendation that we defeated two weeks ago. And that we pass and give the two-year extension to the business. Thank you. Further speaker, four. Councillor McGuire, do you have a question or a question? Because um, it's fairly unusual, as we said, and our planning staff can't, if shall this um, go to SAT, our planning staff can't um, represent us, I believe. That's correct. Um, that being said, does that mean that in terms of legal costs and whatnot, is there a substantial chance of legal costs that we'll have to obtain, or will just be our councillors going and representing us in that terms, or we'll still have to seek legal advice, etc.? And yeah. do you have a rough idea on what that may be? There's still legal costs to pay, and based on previous experience, Mr. CA, ballpark figure for a SAT appeal. Um, through the Mayor, based on this matter, as the decision is just relating to amending planning conditions, should Mr Evans choose to ask for this decision to be reviewed at the State Administrative Tribunal, he can actually choose two options. There's a Class 1 option, which means that he would not have any legal representatives, nor would the City have any legal representatives, and the, arg and the argument or the debate would be heard by the Tribunal matter, just with Mr Evans and the councillors in the room. However, um, Mr Evans would also have the option of Class 2, which would be where he would be um, represented by the lawyer, and also the city can then choose if they want to be represented by a lawyer or not. Um, so really it's up to council's decision if they choose to refuse the decision and it is reviewed at the State Administrative Tribunal whether the councillors want to represent themselves alone or whether they would likely grow representation, depending on the classification that's selected by Mr Evans. Thank you. Speaker 4, Councillor McCleary. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I would just like to remind councillors, what we're doing here is trying to leave in time to retain the two conditions, and that is a solid fence and the after hours not to happen. That is all that we're asking. It is business as usual. If the, man, if the business will put up a solid fence, if he'll continue to work in the hours that have been told in the approval of the original one, that all has to be done. So I'm standing to support the motion that Councillor Kelly's putting up. Thank you. <coughs> For the speaker against, Councillor Stick. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm actually in support of Councillor Morris, sir. And, and quite frankly, Council needs to understand that, no, we didn't get a figure of uh, legal representation because we don't know if uh, the proponent is going to have legal representation. But that's not the issue. The issue is he's entitled to run his business. He's entitled to run it for the hours that he's seeking. Council is being a little bit, for want for a better word, I can't, you know, make council look bad, but we are being a little bit pedantic in this issue, sir. We really are. And, and so for this issue, I would simply say, if this person and if this business is not being in their legal right, well, then let the health department deal with it. That's what they're there for. That's what they're there for. They're there to make good of all businesses. Council is here just to give a planning approval. That's our job. That's what we do. And some of you are getting bogged down with your job. So get real. That's thanks, all I'm thanks, saying. Thanks, Councillor Sorry, sir. I'll sit down. Speaker 4, Councillor McGuinness. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, look, I'd just like to also support the motion as it stands uh, and disagree with Councillor Steck in, in her remarks there. It is our job, I feel it is our job to protect people that live in an area 
it is our job that if uh, the proponent is not uh, meeting previous requests in terms of ask, being asked to put up, up a fence and being asked to operate within the hours as stipulated uh, and, and is not actually doing that, then it is our job uh, to protect the people that, that live in the area and who are used to and have the right to the amenity of living in that area. Excuse me, I'm please not to mutter while I'm Councillor McGuinness, my direct your remarks to me, thanks. Well, could you please ask Councillor yeah. Steck not to mutter while I'm making a uh, conversation? I, I gave her the respect of hearing what she had to say and I'd appreciate the same. Um, so, in closing, I'd just like to say that I support the motion as it stands. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker against, Councillor Hayward. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'm just concerned that we'll go to SAT and we'll lose $25,000 and it would cost a lot less than that for us to build the fence. Uh, and, uh, and we still won't have the fence. So I, I just, I just, I'm not sure if this is uh, if this is a very, very difficult one, and I'm certainly uh, not happy with how it's, as many of us aren't aren't happy. But I'm just worried that if we support this motion and it goes to SAT, we'll end up losing more money and still not have a fence. So I just, I wonder what other options there might be. That's that's all. Thank you. Speaker Four, Councillor Warnock. Let's ask a question, Mr. Mayor. Have sure. we had any complaints recently about this operation? Oh, I'm not sure. Any complaints recently? Um, besides consultation on specific applications, there's been no formal complaint registered this year. This year? Okay, thanks. Further speaker, four. Councillor Giles. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, on that matter about um, complaints, I do note that some of the submissions were definitely against um, allowing these... Um, allowing the um, business to run as it is without the fence and on Saturday afternoon. So, albeit there's been no actual complaints, there's certainly people who are against uh, the business operating in that manner. I, I do take uh, Councillor Hayward's point and I'm, I'm very cognizant of that, but I do feel that at times we do have to stand um, on a point and make a point and I do not think that this business has operated with goodwill uh, towards either the council or, or its neighbours uh, so far uh, and uh, are very hesitatingly say that I do uh, want to pursue this, uh, if necessary, um, to SAT, and I think, um, well, we'll just have to wait and see what the result of that is, but I do think we have to make a point. People cannot just um, disregard conditions and, and rules that are set. If everybody did that, we would be in a, a bit of a mess. So I would uh, wholeheartedly support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Further speaker against? Councillor Jones. subjective matter. Um, I share Councillor Hayward's concern that once again we might finish up in SAT and that is the last thing we want to do. Um, I understand that one of the proponents whose submission is actually appended to the agenda is no longer there um, and in fact there's somebody who lives much closer who says uh, that they're not worried at all. So it seems to me that um, uh, to um, affirm this motion um, is to send us into a fairly grey area. Um, so I'll be supporting Councillor Morris and Councillor Hayward uh, in this matter. Speaker four. Councillor Kelly, close, thanks. Yeah, um, look, uh, I'd just like to uh, make some points about some of the arguments uh, against uh, this amenity. Firstly, uh, Councillor Morris's argument that the factory wasn't there, uh, or was there, and it's there now. Uh, the fact is that the factory wasn't there. That's why we've got to this point. It was a passive uh, area used for uh, industrial uh, use, uh, fairly light industrial at that, Mr Mayor. There were no complaints prior, and uh, the fact that uh, we had somebody come in change the use is why we're here right now. So the fact that uh, the factory was there, might have been there, um, and uh, it was an entirely different use. So uh, let's not get uh, caught up in that. One day that we went there, and I was there as well, I've been there more than once, um, yes, uh, they started up the machine inside. Noise is uh, not necessarily just internal. We're talking about cranes that are clunking, trucks that are moving, backing up, uh, noises of different description. 
uh, a solid fence can uh, mitigate against that. So, look, we're, we're talking an entirely different situation than what was before. Uh, this was a change of use, and indeed a change of use didn't come here in the first place. That's why we're here. So uh, let's not get bogged down that it was a factory then and it was a factory now. Yes, it was a factory of some description, a yard, but it's changed. Um, as for uh, the Councillor Jones subjective issue, yes, it is subjective, uh, Councillor Jones, absolutely, but it is still a planning factor. You can argue on amenity, subjective, objective or otherwise. It is in the book. So let's not get worried about whether or not we've got something that's subjective, objective, blue, green, pink or orange. It is there, it is a legitimate reason and we can use it. Look, I think that the first thing that everybody has to remember is, is that we've allowed this guy to operate. That's fine. He's got it. He's got a permit. All we're doing is putting some conditions on him to make sure that he moves, shakes, does what he's doing within certain parameters. The conditions that we've already accepted, there's quite a few on there, there's the last two. Now, I don't know why he wants to argue about the solid fence, and I don't know why he wants to argue about the Saturday afternoon. Surely somebody can give something to their neighbours and to uh, what is essentially a playground next door. I mean, this, this is not uh, an extreme ask. And indeed, I'll make uh, Mr Evans an offer. Uh, once he's put the solid fence up, which is probably only going to be some sort of plywood, I'll organise, uh, probably with another councillor or two, to get a mural point put on it. So in actual fact, looking from the... Uh, I don't order, sir. That is inappropriate. Councillor Kelly, I suggest you just stick to the arguments that you've heard already. I mean, it was your idea for the mural, but I wouldn't go there again. No, okay, thanks, Mr. Mayor. What I'm saying is there's two simple uh, conditions applied to an existing business to ensure that that business does not impact upon the amenity of the people who live in the neighbourhood, the people who use the park, the children who play in the park, ultimately the wetland that sits there, the pleasantness of the green space that has been set next to this place as a matter of history so that people can use it and there is a separation. Good fences make good neighbours. A chain lock fence is not a good fence. Uh, by having that solid fence and by keeping him uh, to a reasonable uh, operation hours means that we're going to mitigate against constant complaints that will come in and they'll come in and our staff will be uh, out there on a Saturday or Sunday when they do come in if they do come in. So what we're doing is taking a safety first approach to this it's a good approach, it's a legitimate and a legal approach, and I ask councillors to support this. So if we can get on with it, and Mr Evans can get on with his business, hopefully in accord with his neighbours. Thanks, Mr Evans. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Now, just for clarification, councillors, we're dealing with the item on the, in, on the screen in front of you, and this does deal specifically with a request to delete the need for a solid fence and also with a request to amend the trading hours to include Saturday afternoon. So all in favour of that, please indicate. This is your <laughs> Councillor Kelly. <laughs> All in favour of the uh, of the reckon, of the your motion, move Councillor Kelly. Seeing the Councillor Cook, what is on? Is that on your screens as well? Yeah, the one that's on the screen. We all good? Everybody happy? <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> that's right. All in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those against? One, two, three, four, five. That's carried. We're all happy? Not happy, but we all know what we've just done. That's good. Let's go to item 11.1. I'll be happy about this. Thank you. Councillor Jones and Councillor Kelly, all in favour? That's carried unanimously. 11-2, Councillor Stixleaf, Councillor Jones, Councillor Giles, all in favour. That's approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Thanks, councillors. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, officers. We close the meeting at 6.21. <coughs>